On this episode of Jiffy Toast Movie Blog, I review the new film Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Is it a worthy successor to the Jurassic Park franchise? Is it worth seeing this weekend? Is it worth your hard-earned money? I'll give you my review coming up. Welcome back to Jupito's Movie Vlog, I'm Jeff Malicki, and on this channel I bring you movie news, movie reviews, trailer reaction videos, box office predictions, and so much more. If you love movies as much as I do, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, and then click the little bell notification icon so that you don't miss anything. Three years after the destruction of the Jurassic World theme park, Owen Grady and Claire Deering return to the island of Isla Nublar to save the remaining dinosaurs from a volcano that's about to erupt. They soon encounter terrifying new breeds of gigantic dinosaurs while uncovering a conspiracy that threatens the entire planet. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, James Cromwell, Ted Levine, B.D. Wong, and Jeff Goldblum. It is rated PG-13 for intense sequences of science fiction violence and peril. Alright, so Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The movie spends a good amount of time, especially near the beginning, talking about animal rights. They treat the dinos as if they were actual wildlife creatures, you know, like lions and tigers and elephants, not monsters. And I really dig that approach. However, man created these dinosaurs, not God. Do we have the right and responsibility to do what we can to save them? Or do we let nature do a course correction because these creatures had their chance and they died out 65 million years ago? The first act of this movie is definitely the best part. The whole part about saving the dinosaurs from the island that is about to explode because suddenly there's a volcano on it and it decides to become active, that part was really cool. I enjoyed that and it was the best part of the film. Unfortunately, when they leave the island, that is when the film starts to fall apart a little bit and I think it will be divisive among moviegoers whether or not it falls apart so much that they forget the fun that is the first act because the story and writing are not great. But let's face it. You don't go to a movie like this for great writing. You go to be entertained by big giant dinosaurs. And using that metric, this movie succeeds, especially in the first act. Of course, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard return from the first film, and unfortunately there it really isn't a whole lot of new character development with either one of them. Owen is the same exact guy from the first film, and he's the same at the beginning of the movie as he is at the very end. Claire has a little bit more growth and development, but she too is virtually the same character from the end of the first film all the way through this movie. The supporting cast, especially Justice Smith's character, was so annoying. He plays this young man who works at a call center with Claire and who saved the dinos campaign. And he's afraid of everything. He's afraid of getting on an airplane. He's afraid of mosquitoes. He's afraid of dinosaurs despite working for an organization that wants to save the dinosaurs. I really did not like his character at all. There's another character played by Daniela Pineda. She's a teammate of the annoying kid, and she didn't bother me as much. But yeah, both of these characters could have easily been written out of the script, and the movie would not have changed at all. The villains in this movie are cartoon characters. They are stereotypical, cookie-cutter, totally cliché corporate bad guys who just want to sell dinosaurs to get millions of dollars. We've seen these types of characters thousands of times before, and they don't give us anything new. There was no depth to them other than, we're the bad guys, we want to make money. <laughs> the most interesting of the new characters, at least for me, was the young girl who played Maisie Lockwood. She plays the granddaughter of John Hammond's business partner, and there's a couple of throwaway lines where they don't really dive into it, but if they do make a third Jurassic World movie, I would love to see what they do to explore her character a little bit more. The movie is engrossing. I never really checked out of the film, and it kept my attention the entire runtime, but I can see where some people may start to doze off in the middle of the film, because it does slow down quite a bit once they leave the island. There is a lot of suspense. The movie succeeded in keeping me on the edge of my seat when those moments were warranted. There are a few moments, a few throwaway, off-the-cuff comments and lines that could certainly lead to an interesting sequel. I mentioned the granddaughter a few minutes ago, but there's a few other aspects of the film as well that could set up a sequel that I would be really interested in seeing. But I would be equally satisfied if this is the end of the Jurassic franchise for now. The ending is such that it could end here, and I don't think too many people would complain. 
There's certainly not a cliffhanger or anything like that. They do leave the door open for a sequel, and I believe that Colin Trevaro is slated to come back to direct the third one, but I'm not entirely sure if it's actually been greenlit and is like in active development or not. Look, dinosaurs are cool. They, they are so much fun to see on the big screen. Turn your brain off, shove popcorn in your face, and enjoy a big, dumb movie for two hours. My buddy Sean Chandler describes these kind of movies as Taco Bell movies. You know they aren't good for you, there's nothing really satisfying about them, but while you're experiencing it, you have a good time. And I think that is a perfect description. It's not going to win any awards or anything like that, but dang it, I still had a lot of fun with this movie. I don't think any Jurassic movie will ever be able to recapture the magic that Steven Spielberg created back in 1993 with the original Jurassic Park. That movie was fantastic, it is a masterpiece, nothing is going to touch it. But I do think this movie comes close to being my second favorite Jurassic movie. In my initial thoughts video last night, I said that this was my second favorite of the Jurassic franchise, but as I sit and think about it, I'm not sure if it is better than the first Jurassic World which came out in 2015. They are about even with me, and I enjoy both much more than The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. And if this entire movie was the first act, then yeah, Fallen Kingdom would easily be my second favorite in the franchise. It's just that after sleeping on it and thinking about it some more, after about the first 45 minutes or so, the movie does start to fall apart. Again, I still enjoyed it quite a bit, but I totally get where some people are really going to dislike or even hate where it goes once they leave the island. I'm going to give Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom a 3 out of 5. Again, last night after seeing the film, both in my Stardust review and in my initial thoughts live stream that I did, I was really buzzy from this movie. But now that I've had a chance to sit and think and play it in my head again and analyze everything, the weaknesses of the film are stronger. However, by the same token, what I really liked about this film, I really like a lot. I will say that I'm very disappointed in the trailers from this film. They showed way too much. So many surprises that would have worked so much better in the movie itself were spoiled in the trailer. And, you know, I get it. The point of the trailers is to put butts in movie theater seats. And sometimes, in order to do so, they inevitably blow their entire load in the marketing. That is certainly the case here. If you haven't seen the trailers, especially the later trailers that they put out, I think it was the second and third trailer, and if you have any interest in seeing this movie, stay away from the trailers and you will enjoy the movie so much more. Good job, Universal Marketing Team, for blowing your entire load on the trailers. Bottom line is, go ahead and see this movie this weekend. I thought it was a lot of fun. It isn't a perfect movie, not at all. And I'm not even sure if it's a good movie. But I still found it highly enjoyable and well worth a watch. So that's my review of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Have you had a chance to check it out yet? If so, what did you think? How does this movie compare to the first Jurassic World and the other two Jurassic Park sequels? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you fall somewhere in the middle? Whatever you think. Leave me a comment down below and let's talk movies. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Chiquito's Movie Vlog. You can watch more by clicking right over here. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now by clicking that round icon with my picture on it. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button and then share it with other movie fans in your life. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I will see you at the movies. Bye bye.